Hello and welcome to Epitome Video Training. To get the most out of this video, select high quality resolution from the YouTube options in the lower right side of your view. This video covers the Epitome Access Control List security feature. Remember that the first line of defense in all network deployments is the firewall. The firewall is usually included in the router. The firewall blocks all WAN data traffic from the LAN unless rules in the firewall allow NATing of that specific traffic onto the LAN. NATing is network address translation and it forwards specific data to an exact LAN destination. In the case of SIP traffic, your router and firewall must be set to deliver SIP traffic to the PBX LAN IP address. This is where the epitome access control list feature further monitors data for undesired access attempts. ACL is set for applications like XMPP and SIP. If the data attempting access doesn't match the ACL settings, it is terminated there and goes no further. Okay, the access control list is found in the Epitome PBX GUI on the page System Access Control. Click the Access Control List button. Entries are input according to the service. More specifically, access control is the monitoring of data traffic that reaches the PBX via a specific port identification. The service name is used to identify the service to monitor and to input IP addresses that will be blocked or allowed. When a service is desired but not present in the list, the service must first be created. We'll create a service that will monitor SIP traffic. So I'll create a service called SIP. Since SIP uses port 5060 for SIP control, this makes input easier. In our service called SIP, we can identify the port or ports that are to be associated with this service. We could input a range of ports using the range input syntax, which is the first port and last port, separated by a colon. However, since we can kill undesired SIP traffic using only the SIP control port number, we need only to input that port number, 5060. Also part of the list creation is the list type. It could be a deny list or an allow list. I'm going to set up an allow list, which means that all data packets received on this port with IP addresses that match those on the list will be allowed. All others will be denied. The other option is deny list, which means that all data traffic received with IP addresses that match those in the list would be denied, while all others would be allowed. We should also point out that allow lists are used more often than deny lists. Once the service is created, it appears on the table of lists. At this point, there are no entries in the allow list for the service SIP. So, no SIP traffic will be allowed. This applies to WAN and LAN traffic. So the PBX won't even allow telephones on the LAN to communicate with anything served by the PBX. I need to add IP addresses to the service by adding rules. I'm going to allow access to the PBX for SIP data traffic for the SIP provider that is programmed. If we go to the SIP provider mainline, I see the SIP provider is at WAN IP address 87.65.43.21. So I'll go back to the access control list and add it to the list. We'll add it as 87.65.43.21 slash 32. The slash 32 is CIDR notation kind of shorthand for subnet masking and settings, and it means that all 32 bits of the IP address are significant when determining the subnet mask, and therefore only the specific IP address is part of the rule. Since this is an allow list, this is the only IP address that is accepted as valid and acceptable SIP connection. Here again, the ACL applies to traffic on the LAN as well as the WAN. Therefore, this rule will not allow telephones on the LAN to make call connections. For this installation to function, we must add the local area network address to the rule to allow telephones to interact with the PBX. I already know the local area network IP address scheme, but if I want to check it, I can look into the system networking page to see that the subnet of this LAN is 192.168.1. So we'll add 192.168.1.0-24 to the SIP rule. The zero allows any value as the fourth octet. The slash 24 means that only the first 24 bits of this IP address are relevant as a subnet mask, and therefore any IP address that begins with 192.168.1 is part of the rule.
It's important to know that some SIP providers will allow you to register using a domain name. There are advantages in doing this, especially where failover functionality is desired. For that reason, the use of domains is possible in the ACL table. I'll just quickly show you this by inputting xyz.com in the list. Epitome has a quick ACL configuration technique that is possible with the click of one button. It's called Load Recommended Defaults. First, I'm going to delete the changes we just made so that you can see how this works. And since this is the Epitome demo system and has many test telephones connected at various locations, we can't leave this rule in place anyway. We'll have to delete the rule again once we have finished. Once deleted, the ACL is as it was when we first entered this page. Notice that the SIP rule is missing. Watch what happens when I click this button. The system pulls information from other areas, I'll show you these in a minute, and builds an ACL. Notice that the SIP provider IP address is not included on the list. If we want our SIP trunk to work, we must enter that IP address into the newly constructed ACL. The parts of the ACL that were constructed automatically came from the PBX programming on the page PBX Setup, SIP Setup, Local Subnets, and Subnet Masks. From this information, the ACL was built to allow the internal LAN telephones to use the PBX as their server. When we look at what happens to data that passes through the firewall and by NATed port forwarding reaches the PBX, we see that any data that reaches the PBX on the SIP server port 5060 will be compared to the ACL. If the data is not found in the allow list we created, it is stopped then. If the data is allowed, it is processed by the PBX.